Bloody Nora, the Beast from the East is back! Holy shit! I can't tell if it's hail or snow, but holy crap. The Beast from the East, ladies and gentlemen. And nothing is more metaphorical of the video that I'm about to shoot right now for you guys. Now this video is going to be completely different to another video that I did about the same person, because believe it or not, I can be fair and balanced. I can criticise one person and then defend that same person the next. And this is one of those videos. Now, I am of course talking about the titular person from the title, and that is Andy Worski. Now, what has happened is this. Right Wing Watch have made an article about him. Much like how the Daily Beast has made an article about JF. But with the Right Wing Watch video, and also the article, which is where the meat of this comes from, there's really nothing here other than something that would be considered scummy, but we'll get into that. So Andy Worski, due to the blood sports thing that he's gotten involved in, and also with his uh, association with alt-right people, point where it's no longer just simply giving them a platform to speak and air their views, it's uh, now a cash cow for him, in my opinion. I don't think he's into the ideology whatsoever, I think he's purely doing that for the money and the entertainment, and that's fine, you can do that. I have no problem with making money, I'm not an idiot. So there's that, and it seems because of this, as he probably should have realised, and I think a lot of people would realise if they're in this position, that you're going to be under a microscope, and when you're under a microscope, everything you do, and everything you have done, will be viewed, and will be searched, and will be used against you. And this is what Right Wing Watch has done, because Jared Hall, I don't know if he actually runs it, or if he just works for them, but he's become the most well-known name that I've seen. He's decided to take it upon himself to attack Andy, because he perceives Andy to be this threat, and this alt-right guy who's going to, you know, corrupt the society at large. And, uh, well, this is the result of it. A hit piece. This, this is pure and simple. A hit piece. It's not criticism. It's a hit piece. And, honestly, the way they describe it, and what he says, it's actually not as bad as they say. But anyway, let's get to the article. YouTuber, beloved by the alt-right, bragged about sexually assaulting a drunk woman. Whoa, Jared. Whoa, that escalated extremely quickly. Bragging about sexually assaulting a drunk woman. Oh, you better have stuff to back that up, Jared. It would be a shame if the stuff you actually chose to back it up doesn't back it up whatsoever. Andy Worski, a YouTube personality who has risen to notoriety for catering to white supremacists, bragged in a live stream that he secretly removed a condom during sex with a drunk woman. Yes, it is known. He talked about it. I wouldn't say he necessarily bragged about it. They were literally on a long topic about bitches and hoes. And sexual stories. You know, lads talk about that shit. Girls talk about that shit. But, go on. Then he goes through stuff about JF and all that bullshit. And then he says, On the February 28th edition of the Morning Qt livestream, hosted on an obscure YouTube channel, popular with devoted blood sports fans, Worski bragged about removing a condom during sex without the consent of his sexual partner. Oof, Tonka, wow. That's more of an insult to you than to Andy. But yes, he talked about this. This happened. He admitted it. Okay, so rather than read out their choice words from Andy, I'll give you Andy himself. And also, they've kindly given me the video in full context. So from timestamp 2 hours 16 minutes, from when they actually start to talk about it, and then to the end. Although for some reason on their YouTube channel, it's only 2 minutes, and it skips that other couple of minutes beforehand, where they're just about to get into it, which is actually very important. I I just keep seeing that fucking Chappelle show episode, the really real world where fucking light for where Charlie Murphy walks in with his boy just got out of jail. And it's walked in on Monday and Matt liked that kid. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I put it in hey, the side chat. The, the I, Saints walked in like you guys in the jail. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it happened. I don't know. Like, like there might've been like a lot of fucking there. I don't know, but I was just hammered and just chilling. I was having a good time, but, uh, he, he, uh, yeah, I think he was trying to bang, like, he went with all those condoms, which, if I was single, even, it's like, you don't even bring condoms, you just fucking pull out and hope for the best, that's what I'd do. <laughs> the race war <laughs> way of living. I'm not admitting fucking, shit on the air. You bareback it, right? Isn't that right? Yeah. The thing is, I, I cannot officially, uh, answer that question, sir. 
Have you ever, have you ever fucking fucked a chick with condom on and then it was getting like, like really like fucked up, like it wasn't, like it was too, too tight or, you know, like. How many days, how many days were we there? How many days were we there? It was what, five, five days, four days? Four, 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 yeah. Four days. Okay, 100 condoms, so 25 condoms per day. Uh, Yeah. So that would mean he would have to fucking use a condom every fucking hour. Or every, like, two per hour. Yeah, he just has a few accounting for duds, I guess. Whatever. So, so Good no, math. But, what is this math? Why are we doing math? On why this? can't you just wear the same one all weekend? What's wrong with <laughs> this? Is, yeah. hey, 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 I'll say one thing. I was kidding. Rap, stay, stay, stay. Always protect yourself with, with strangers, my friends. Obviously, put on a condom. It's a girlfriend you've known for a while and you trust her and blah blah blah. That's different, but you know, still pull out, calm down, people. Don't fuck a bunch of randoms with no condoms on. Obviously, you do that. After his run in with the ACLU, Andy learned better than to, than yeah, to advocate. No, but he's got yeah, I'm not gonna advocate for that. I mean, aren't you? Aren't you like really scared after you fucked a random and you're like, oh, okay, something's every thinking. random I have ever fucked, I've used condom. With. Been way more scared of pregnancy than uh, than AIDS. I've had I've yeah, never had right. like an I'm afraid I have AIDS scare, but I've had a couple of bitches. I had one of those. In fact, I yeah. had a test yeah. after. I'm not even joking. And yeah. uh, I, I was fucking sweating bullets. And then and then I thought they just check your blood and your piss. No, and no. then they tell you, no, 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 it's like a fucking three week wait, and they mail you. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I fucking have AIDS yet. They, they didn't give you the swab. They did. They did everything. The blood, the fucking swab, and the piss. And then three weeks later, I'm like fucking dying. But I had fucking herpes or some shit. And I opened it and it's ne- all negative. I'm like, oh my God. Ladies, Fuck uh, yeah. Oh, I fucking chicked that. It... For himself. He's like, uh, uh, well, this sure. is the story I was telling. The condom was too tight. Like it was hurting my dick. And she was drunk. So during the sex, I, pu- I pull my dick out. And Maybe I you're just the in the wrong hole. Off. No, no, I pulled the condom off. No, no, it was like I didn't get the proper fucking Trojan ones that you, I, like, I, I usually get. It was some random gas station ones that were so tight. I'm like, yeah, are, are, this is like Asian fit. Fucking bullshit ones. Yeah, it was like Asian fit or something. Buy so I, condom I, I roll it off. Yeah, and then I fucking, and then I fuck her without the condom on. But I was hammered. Like, I pulled it off, and she was mad at me after. She's like, what the fuck? You pulled off the condom and fuck. Yeah, sorry. I pulled out and everything, and then you know, I was like, next day I'm like, oh my god, what did I do? And I went to the fucking walking right clinic. Now. Well, what year? What year did you do that in? Because that's rape today. Yeah, stealthing is illegal now. Uh, that was probably 2000. Say over and seven nine? years, Andy. Over seven years is the and answer. nine. To, okay, 2009 probably. Okay, that's all. <laughs> because because after 2000, 2000, that became rape. That's now rape. I'm just making sure the statute of limitations has passed, my friend. Yeah. We we ended up fucking a bunch of times after that. It doesn't matter to hashtag me too. You could have a you you could look what happened to Aziz Ansari. Dick in this bitch's mouth. Fair enough, fair enough. But I I was twenty. I was probably twenty. So that's eight years or nineteen. I was like like late uh, late teens. Late teens. What you've never pulled off a condom halfway through? No, I've never. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know, man. That's like asking me if I've ever been struck by. What's, hey, what's it like being struck by lightning? I'm like, I've never been struck by lightning. I wouldn't know. <laughs> like, like banging a few times after that. I, I never lived in a condominium, Andy. So there we are. That's the clip. I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. The other YouTube personalities on the stream asked Warsky how long ago the story he recounted had taken place, concerned about whether the statute of limitation had expired on Worski's alleged sexual assault. Partly that was to joke, but also, you know, in some countries around the world, and in Canada even, men have been put into jail for what is called stealthing. You know, that's what it is. That's what he was alluding to. That's what he was basically describing. Stealthing is considered, in some places, a non-consensual act. It's kind of like deceiving somebody. It's actually kind of a murky legal ground, actually, because not everywhere has it as like a misdemeanor or some kind of sexual assault thing yet. It's something that still is kind of arbitrarily punished from what I can gather from the research that I did. So you can take it or leave it. But regardless, I don't think there is a statute of limitations in Canada per se 
Although some people have been arrested for it and put into prison. So basically nothing's going to happen because it was so long ago and if you actually saw it in that clip, there's another reason why nothing's going to happen to him other than his reputation will suffer. So after going on about how it happened seven years ago, blah, 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 he then says to the other chat participants, what, you never pulled off a condom halfway through? That's called a joke, Jared. It's called a joke. Now, okay, so this is the hit piece and you've seen the context and it's pretty clear it's not as bad as they're making out. He's not bragging about sexual assault. Not even, I wouldn't even say he was bragging. I think he was just chatting about it. Maybe it is bragging, but it didn't come across as bragging to me. And basically what it is, is young lad talks about sexual encounter. That's basically what it is. Now, stealthing is a scummy practice. Whether or not a woman does it when she punches holes in the condom, or whether a man does the same thing or takes it off without telling her. It's a scummy thing to do. However, within the context of the event, I will say this. I don't think Andy intended to stealth from the start. Instead, he did it because he himself was drunk and thought, well, fuck it, I'm under a lot of pain. I need to take this off but I still want to get laid. So he was thinking more about himself than the other person, true. However, I don't think in his drunken state it was to do with a scummy thing. However, it's still a very personally irresponsible thing to do. And he does seem to regret it. I mean, maybe regret it because he could have got a disease from that, that woman that he'd just met who he would later date or have a fling with. I can't quite tell what he means by it. Because he says he dates her, but he describes it more as a fuck buddy thing. But if he says it's a date thing, if it's a relationship, it's a relationship. I'm not going to put my spin on that. It's still irresponsible. And, you know, if he was sober, I actually don't think he would have done that. From what I've seen of him, what I've known about him, he doesn't seem the type of person to do that sober. If he is, well then, he is a scummy guy. It's still the wrong thing to do and he should have just stopped. But hindsight is twenty twenty, So... There's really nothing you can do about it now. What's done is done. And even though the woman was pissed off about it, she wasn't pissed off enough to completely end all contact with him. It's pretty clear that they liked each other and still do like each other because they're now friends, even after they were intimate. And they fucked after that. But according to Jared Holt, the supposed victim doesn't have a say in this. She is a victim whether she likes it or not, even if she stayed with him for a little while longer and has remained friends for years. Regardless... Her word is not necessary, it is not needed, despite the fact that we must always give voice to victims, apparently. No, this is a hit piece. And when it comes to a hit piece, I mean, it comes to slandering somebody, because it is defamation. Because he, although he was describing something that in some countries has been, you know, actually prosecuted as a sexual assault, in actuality, it kind of is or isn't. It's still not, still to be determined. Whether or not she felt violated or not is superfluous. It's not needed, it's not necessary. He's a rapist, he's a scumbag, and now he must be tried in the court of public opinion and uh jared that's not how this works if you're going to call somebody a rapist if you're going to say that they bragged about sexual assault you have to actually have a clip where they brag about sexual assault rather than bragging or talking about something that has, is literally a gray area because what's also interesting is that you're outraged about the man doing it even though he actually didn't have a malicious intent in doing so, in my opinion, from what he says. But you also need to care when women do it. And women do it a lot. As much as men do. In a different way, and for different reasons. But it's still stealthing. Well, whatever, guys. You know, it, it, it's, it just doesn't, doesn't happen because women are the victims, remember. Men are the perpetrators. Now, personally, I think this shows Andy's lack of brains in certain situations. Because who in their right mind would actually share a story like that? Like, you would share the story with your own IRL friends, or maybe if he was talking to AP and the rest in person, but not publicly in front of thousands of people. Because when you've got that microscope on you, you are going to have this thing thrown back in your face. And that was an incredibly stupid thing for him to do. And also, back in the day, an incredibly irresponsible thing for him to do. So I can't exactly defend him for everything here. What he did here is kind of his own fault. He's kind of opened himself up to stuff like this. So now he's really got to watch himself, even though in the perfect world, he shouldn't have to. But that's the price of being a public figure in the way that he is right now. So in summary, Andy did a stupid thing, irresponsible thing in the past, which he regrets. It's pretty clear he regrets. So in summary, it's a scummy act, the act of stealthing. 
Although in Andy's case, it doesn't actually come from a malicious place and he does regret it. And I do probably think he actually does regret it, not just for the fact he almost got, you know, a sexual disease because he didn't know if she was clean or not. But I assume, you know, being his friend, that yeah, that maybe there is some maybe guilt or embarrassment over that because that's not something you do to your friends. But then again, it seems like they didn't know each other at the time. So there's that. Jared Holt is probably liable for a defamation case because this is this seems like textbook def- def- defamation. I think Andy needs to learn to keep his mouth shut on certain things lest they be used against him. But ultimately, it's a storm in a teacup. That's what it is. And that's the end of the video. And until next time, it's been your boy. And I'll see you later.